Uh, good morning and welcome to service this morning. Uh, we want to welcome everyone who's with us, not only here, but what I, on whatever platform you're on. Um, and this happens to be service for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, the 25th of July. I'm going to ask you to stand and join with me, please. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into, the, into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. reading from Psalm 145, verses 10 through 18. All the works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power. That all people may know your, of your power and glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion and dress of all the nations. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. We continue with our gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, Lord and Savior, open now your saving word. Let it burn like fire within us, speak until our hearts are stirred. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing for the good news that you bring. The Holy Gospel this day, reading from the book of St. John in the sixth chapter. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not be enough bread for each of them to get, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but where are they among so many people? And Jesus said, make all the people sit down. There were, now there was a great deal of grass in that place, and so they sat down, about 5,000 men in all. And then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed, distributed them to those who were seated. So also with the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. 
when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea was rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat. And they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately as he got into the boat, they reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We have this morning in front of us not one, but actually two stories. I'll deal with them in order this morning. The first one begs a question. And I love to ask this question of my confirmation classes. Here's what I usually ask them when we're going to start in on miracles. I, said, I say to them, when does 5 plus 2 times 1 equal 12? Okay, you got that? When does 5 plus 2 times 1 equal 12? And they usually say to me the following, it doesn't. See, because what they're doing is math. They're not doing God. They're not doing Jesus, they're doing math. And I go, yes it does, and I get them to turn to this passage, and I go, now, let me show you God's math. And they go, that doesn't make any sense. And I go, yeah, well, no, it doesn't. But then again, a lot of interesting things in this book don't necessarily make sense to us. And I usually get them to turn to the book of Numbers at this point, and I point out to them that we have talking donkeys. But that's just the start of this whole discussion. If you don't know about that, ask me later. I'll give you the reference for talking donkeys. Because they're here. What Jesus says is, I know what's going on. And what's important is this. The disciples haven't looked at an important factor. They have not looked at all their resources. All that they have in front of them. What they've looked at is, okay, what we've got right here in front of us. They're being literalists. We've got a problem right now, dear friends. If you don't know about it, there's a whole number of corporations telling workers to go back to work, come back to the office. And we've got a whole lot of corporations that are encountering this. No, I don't think so. Because they discovered what it means to be at home and working, and I don't have to spend, like some of my friends in southern Ontario, up to two hours on the road just getting to work and two hours on the road going home from work. The resource is right there. All you have to do is make sure you plug in on the internet. They don't understand that you may not need to come in five days a week. What happens here is you'll notice they've missed the most important resource that's available. Children. Because you see, in Jesus' day, children don't count. I'm sorry, but in Jesus' day, neither do women. It's what it is. In his society, in his culture, you don't count. That's how it goes. Kids don't count, especially because they're not useful until they can do things. Like until you can clean out the barns. Until you can feed the pigs. Until you can gather the eggs and do all that kind of harvesting, farming sort of work. Children don't count. 
This child has come prepared. It's like mom sent him with lunch. Because this is a good sized lunch for him. He's got five loaves and two fish. Now you have to remember that bread doesn't look like bread. What he's got is he's got flat bread. Pita, pitas is what he's got. There's no yeast in it because it doesn't travel well. So he's got flat bread. And the fish he's got should look like they're working for the Department of Highways in Southern Ontario. That, well, no, I'm, I'm serious about this. <laughs> it should be white because there's that much salt on it to preserve it. So you're going to need something to wash it down with. Oh, holy Christmas, it's going to be salty. But this is what he's got. And Jesus goes, sure, I can work with this, no problem. Watch. And he does this that's important. He says grace. He took, takes the loaves and blesses them. He says grace. He takes the fish and blesses them. He says grace. And in doing that, dear friends, he's done the most important thing we do at every meal as Christians. He stepped into the presence of God and said, thank you. Now we're ready to go and look, leftovers. This is one of the places where we as church got it. I have never been to a church supper in over 60 years. Yeah, that tells you how old I am. In more than 60 years, I have never gone to a church supper that there wasn't food left over. There's always more to go around. Okay, maybe it's just buns and a little bit of uh, egg salad or tuna salad, but there's food. There's still food when we're all done. This is what Jesus notes, and he sends them away with care packages. They gather up 12 basketfuls, and that'll go around. The blessing of the Lord. Now he's about to give them a second blessing because, hey, guess what? I'm going to show you who I am. This is the second half. I'm going to take a little stroll. I'm walking on the water, and when they say terrified, they are. Now, I'm not going to spend the time I could about the understanding in Jesus' day that have to do with spirits. If you really want to see that, I'll direct you to 1 Samuel 28 if you want to talk about spirits. We can get into a whole discussion about raising spirits, witches, exorcisms. We could be here all week doing this. What they think is they're seeing a ghost walking across the water because Jesus can't pull that off. And he goes, sure I can. I am the Son of God. Anything that's required, I can do. And notice, they've been rowing hard. He gets in the boat, they're there. That fast. And if you want to see that happen, Acts chapter 8. Take a look at the story that's there, and it works for the disciples as well. I'll point that out to you. What is happening here is this. Blessing after blessing after blessing because we are using the resources we have at hand. If we as a church, if we as a Christian people pull together the resources we had and use them in the fashion that Jesus asks us, we'd be dangerous. I promise, we'd be dangerous people. Because what would happen is this whole world would look entirely different. Unfortunately, there are other impediments to that. That's another story for another day. But what Jesus is reminding us of is this. One, I want you to look at your treasure, says Jesus. 
And this is a great time to do it because we're still partly in the pandemic when we're still thinking about things. So we've got still time to sit for a minute. It's summertime. We've got time to sit for a minute. Because being good Canadians, we need to sit for a minute. We don't get enough summer. You know this. We don't get enough summer. So we've got to sit for a minute. Number two, Jesus says, Knowing those treasures, I want you to give thanks before God for the blessings that come out of that. And I'll leave you with that thought because that empowers us. If we seriously do it, it empowers us for the work that God's going to give us to do, the places Jesus is going to take us, the words that the Spirit is going to give us to share this day and this week, as we're working for the kingdom. Amen. I'll ask you to stand and join with me for the hymn of the day, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Open the Eyes of My Heart. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation.
pray for the church. Bless the ministries of our neighboring congregations. Collingwood Road Presbyterian, Good Shepherd Catholic, and St. Matthias Anglican. Empower churches throughout the world and encourage missionaries who accompany global neighbors. Kindle in us a spirit of your collaboration that all people may know your loving works. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for creation. Send rain to lands experiencing drought and come to the aid of those enduring sweltering heat. Nurture wheat and barley crops grown for the nourishment of your people and conserve aquatic habitats and fish populations. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for those who govern, cast out arrogance, selfishness, and corruption, and instruct those who lead to practice compassion and humility. Inspire them with a vision of the common good and a commitment to ensure that all who hunger are fed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those bowed down by heavy burdens, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those unable to find affordable housing, and those without health insurance. Console those who grieve and hear the cries of all who come to call upon you for healing. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for this assembly. Deepen our resolve to use what we have to serve those in need. When we worry that we do not have enough resources for ministry, assure us of your abundance. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, great. is great. We pray especially this day, O Lord, for those who have asked to be list, lifted before you and who require the assistance of your spirit. We remember Sandy, Howie, Carrie, Curtis, Sharon, Joan, Tammy, Henry and Violet, Eric, Rebecca and Curtis, Kim, Viola, Rose, Rick, David and Amelia, Nancy, Tiffany, Myron and Noreen, Pam, Helen, Nancy, Kelsey, Chris, Riley, Tony, Yvette, Herman, Kevin, Avery, Kenny, Bruce, and Doug. We ask, O oh Lord, that you extend your renewing and restoring hand to each of them, supply as is needful. We also give thanks for those who have died and who have gone before us, and we ask that you you continue to sustain us, sustain us by the power of your Spirit in the witness of all the saints, that the love of Christ that surpasses, with the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge, hear us, O God. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share the peace. A lot of peace is going on. Yes. <laughs> we continue with the dialogue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
And then the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for now, all, for now all is ready. I'm going to remind you as you are seated, please remember we need our masks on.
I'll invite you to stand and join with me. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you now and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive then the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We do have one announcement this morning. And this is important to me because I've actually met this person. Um, but not here at the church. It's Hannah Unsworth's birthday today. So we remember her and we need to sing happy birthday to her. I don't have any other announcements at the moment. Anything else we need to add? No? Okay. Uh, then we stand for our sending song, and I'm going to see if it's the one I'm thinking of, because it's entitled Amen. Stand and join with me. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.